Hi, I'm Jody from Thermwood. In my last video, I introduced you to cut layer additive and showed you an aluminum trim fixture. I also told you we were working on a new way to make aluminum molds for plastic. It wasn't ready then, it is now. In this video, I'll show you a new way to use cut layer additive to make metal molds. These molds should work for several plastic processes like vacuum forming, blow molding, rotational molding, and reaction injection molding. There are probably others, but these are the ones that we're familiar with. The one thing they all have in common is they often make large parts, which means they need large molds. Also, they often make their molds from aluminum. Cut layer additive can do aluminum. So, how do we improve on what they're already doing? We make it simpler and less expensive. Let me show you. The one thing that these molds, and all molds for that matter, have in common is that they need a mold face or cavity. You know, the surface that actually shapes the part. This surface. The simplest possible mold is just that mold face, maybe an inch or two thick. Just add some standoffs like this and you're ready. This is easy using cut layer additive. And you have to admit, it is simple. But it may not be enough. It might work for a few things, but molds usually need more. Different processes need different things. Some need vents, others need vacuum, most need to control temperature. All this tends to make molds larger, more complex, and more expensive. I'm not going to get into the exact needs for each process. If you're working with any of them, you already know what you need. So how do we add these things and still keep it low cost? If you could put it all in this mold, that would be great. It would keep the mold simple and give you what you need. Can this possibly be done? Believe it or not, it can. Let's see how. Before we start, let's understand how this mold's made. This mold, which is now solid, is actually made up of one inch thick aluminum layers stacked, pinned, and bolted together. Now that we understand that, let's see what's inside. We'll start with the bolts that hold it together. This also shows alignment dowels that keep layers precisely aligned. Looks like a lot of stuff already. On this particular mold, we attached each layer to the next so there are bolt heads on every layer. Sometimes we bolt two or three layers together at a time. That reduces the number of bolts, but they're usually larger. It depends on the overall shape and what you're trying to do. Here, we bolted each layer so there are more. This is actually a vacuum forming mold, so the next thing we need is some way to create vacuum so we can form the part. Let's try this. These blue areas are chambers inside the mold. They're essentially cavities completely inside the mold. We'll drill holes from the top surface into these cavities and apply vacuum to form the part. That takes care of vacuum. Finally, we need some way to control mold temperature. We'll add channels through the mold, then circulate temperature control liquid through those channels. Here they are. You might notice that, in this case, we tied them all together on the ends so liquid flows straight through the entire mold from one end to the other. This is the simplest approach, but you could make serpentine channels or group them in a lot of different ways, depending on what you want. Okay, that's a lot of stuff. Does it all actually fit? Yes, it does. So, as you see, everything you need can actually be put in the mold face. It looks so simple here. Hard to believe everything that's inside. After seeing what's inside, you may think this is really not all that simple. Although it looks complex, when you look at the whole picture, it's really not. Complex is only a problem if it's difficult to do. If it's easy, it can still be called simple. The basic mold is simple, what you see here. There are only two things that make you think it's complicated. Cutting void areas inside a solid mold and 
all the programming that'll be needed. Okay, let's deal with the voids. How do we machine channels and chambers that are completely inside a solid mold? Although the mold is solid now, it wasn't always. Remember, it's made of layers bolted together. Since the mold is made of layers, like this, you can create internal channels by simply machining holes and slots into certain layers before assembly. When assembled, these holes and slots match up and become channels and chambers, you know, openings inside a solid mold. No real magic here, but no way to do this with any other process I'm aware of. With cut layer additive, it's actually easy, but what about all the machining to make these things? This is done by nesting the parts on a large sheet of aluminum and machining them all at once using the cut layer additive machine. Yes, there is a lot of machining, but it's all automatic. And remember, this is all high speed machining, much faster than a normal metal cutting. On regular mills, it would take forever. With the specialized cut layer machine designed for just this, it becomes really practical. Parts are machined all at once and don't need to be handled individually. And it's all automatic. Little or no operator interface. What looks like a really difficult machining process is actually rather easy. You could even stretch a little and call it simple. Okay, looks like the machining's not a problem, but what about programming all those parts? and all that internal detail. Programming using traditional methods would be a serious nightmare. Luckily, we're not going to do that. With cut layer additive, we don't actually program in the normal sense. If you watched my earlier video, you know about how it's done. However, I admit this is a little more involved than what I showed you then. The basic structure is still really easy. Show the machine what you want and tell it how you want it made. You show it what you want by sending it a CAD file of the basic shape. Not a detail file, but just the basic shape. Then you tell it how you want it made by answering some questions, such as what you want to make it from, how thick do you want it, do you want to break layers into segments, things like that. For a lot of parts, even really big parts, that can all be done in literally less than five minutes. The system then slices the part, creates layers, and nests them on your material. Now we need to define what we want inside. You know, where you want the bolts, alignment dowels, channels, and chambers. Okay, this is a little more involved, but still not all that bad. We've added features that make it easy to show the machine what you want, layer by layer. We've taught the system what all these things are, so when you show it what you want, it knows what to do. For example, when you put a bolt in one layer, it adds a matching threaded hole in the next layer. When you add an alignment dowel, it not only puts a hole in this layer, but it also adds a matching hole in the corresponding layer. As you add channels and chambers, you can see what's on the previous and subsequent layers to make sure they match up and avoid interference. All in all, it's not that bad, and I know of no other practical way this kind of thing could be programmed. Actually, you haven't programmed it. All you've done is defined what you want. You can do this away from the machine using software that duplicates the definition part of what's in the machine. Now you send it to the machine and it does the actual programming. It creates the parts needed and the programs needed to actually make them. This whole thing is actually quite advanced. It considers things other than just parts, such as machine characteristics, materials being cut, the cut process, and a myriad of factors absolutely necessary to create an efficient program that will work automatically. It also knows how to create the most efficient toolpath. In addition to machining, it also prints assembly information on each part, which makes the final assembly a lot easier. This is the true beauty of machine intelligence. It does the heavy lifting. 
Although it might look complex at first, once you understand, neither programming nor machining is all that tough. Programming and machining are probably what has kept anyone from doing this before. The core of cut layer additive is advanced technology that makes something that looks complex really easy. If you think about it, this is a totally new technology, creating molds that look simple on the outside and are simple to make, even though there's a lot inside. Now that we've covered the basics, there are some other things that may not be immediately obvious. As you saw, you can machine channels for liquid and chambers for vacuum, but realize you can put them about anywhere you want inside the mold. This means with multiple channels and proper plumbing, you could actually circulate liquid at different temperatures in different parts of the mold. We plumb them all together here, but it wouldn't be all that difficult to do each channel independently or in small groups. Okay, it may not be important on smaller molds, but for really large or complex ones, it's needed. It also means you can direct vacuum to different areas of the mold independently. Now, this really is something new. I don't know of anyone doing it today or if it's even important, but it does offer something new. You can throttle vacuum differently in different areas using a simple valve aiding you in forming the sheet. Certain areas can be pulled quicker than others. You could also use programmed valves to turn on vacuum in some areas before others. If you noticed, we have three different vacuum chambers in our mold, so you could do it here if you wanted to. Like varying temperature, this new capability may not be useful on small or simple parts, but could be for large, difficult to form parts. This will take some learning, but it's something you can do right now. Okay, I admit we're at the very front of this. We've made one mold and we still have a lot to learn, but as you can see, we can make molds this way right now and they work. With a little time and some experience, no telling what we'll be able to do or what you'll be able to do. Again, if you want to know more, give us a call. Thanks.